Hello and welcome to Issues and Insights, the show that keeps you up to date on all the great things happening in our community. I'm Kendra Scott, I'm your host today, and I'm super excited because we are on location. You will see we are surrounded by big, beautiful fire trucks and all this very cool equipment. We are at the Radcliffe Fire Department Headquarters, Station 1 in Radcliffe, Kentucky, and joining us today is Deputy Marshal our good friend Tommy Crane. He is Hello. here to tell us all about all the great things and safety that we need to know for spring. It's hard to believe spring is here. I know, right? I feel like we were just talking about fall safety. Right, right. <laughs> and now yep. it's spring safety. Absolutely. And yep. there's a lot of great reminders today. So please welcome Tommy Crane, Deputy Fire Marshal, Radcliffe Fire Department. Oh, thank you. Nice to have you as always. How have you been? Doing well, doing well. Good. And you? I'm doing, doing great. Awesome. So we're excited to talk a little bit about all the great things um, and all those reminders that folks need because it is spring, thank you Lord. <laughs> um, and But with that we come comes all the spring cleaning yep. and all the, the city does clean up. Uh, yes. Folks are gearing up, you know, doing their houses. We're doing activities outside. So let's just start off a little bit by talking about that spring cleaning and how we as citizens and consumers can not only help ourselves and our neighborhood, but help first responders. Oh, uh, absolutely. So um, well, let's kind of start in the inside of the house. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I know when I was growing up, uh, my mom would take vacation in the spring and, and do like a big spring cleaning. You my know, mom so, did too. Is so that a was, thing? Yeah, that's, I guess it's <laughs> that's a thing for did. the moms. Yes. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> So, uh, you know, some of the just simple things is uh, while you're cleaning, uh, you know, you're doing those deep cleanings, uh, clean things like your around your refrigerator, oh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, the uh, the motor there, it's, you know, it's, it's constantly spinning and, and uh, so dust pulls in there. So mm -hmm. if you can try to vacuum, if, if you can pull the refrigerator out a little, get behind it. Same way with the dryer, you know, oh, try yeah. to clean your dryer pretty regular. Uh, you know, make sure you're cleaning, you know, after every uh, time you're drying a load mm -hmm. of clothes, make sure you're cleaning the lint screen there, but also, uh, you know, try to take it out and, and clean the, the hose, the, the piping that connects mm -hmm. it, as well as uh, making sure that, uh, you know, you can vacuum down underneath the dryer, anything that around it, uh, you know, things that we, we don't do on a everyday basis, but just, you know, mm -hmm. once a year, try to try to do that deep cleaning. Uh, you know, make sure you're checking the, the outside where it vents outside uh, mm -hmm. to make sure that it's uh, your dampers in place, that it's not clogged. Um, the other thing to think about is um, uh, we do have some areas where we've had uh, uh, birds have built nests oh, uh, yes, in, in the dryer that. vents. Mm -hmm. And so that's, you know, they're clogging the vent as well as putting that nice dry material in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, and, and other things, you know, wasps will build nests in there, mud daubers. So, so just, uh, just make sure you're checking it periodically mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that it has a good flow and that the lint hasn't built up because, um, you know, that, you know, uh, if you were to take a little ball of lint and set it on fire, you know, you, it'll just, you know, ignite instantly wow. because of all those little fibers and everything. Oh, sure. so, yeah. so, um, so that's something to think about there. Uh, like you said, cleaning around your refrigerator, uh, just, just those things that have motors and things that you usually don't mm -hmm. get behind. Uh, check your smoke alarms, your carbon monoxide detectors. Yeah. Um, it's always good to, to vacuum those periodically as mm -hmm. well. Uh, you know, if you, uh, you know, just, you know, be careful, obviously getting on the ladder, but, uh, you know, take your hose extension for your vacuum cleaner, or if you can take them down, you know, take them down and vacuum them, uh, just so that way they can, uh, the sensors are clean and they've got a good flow if, if there is mm -hmm. smoke in the house to, to activate and everything. Mm -hmm. It also helps to keep you from having false alarms because sometimes the dust can actually, you know, if it settles on there and then maybe, uh, you know, your AC kicks on and it'll blow that dust around and it could actually oh. trigger them because they would see that something's in the way oh, okay. and make them think that the, you know, there's smoke there's and it could there. just be a, just that. So, okay. um, and how many do you need to have in your home? Well, it, it kind of depends. Uh, that's the, the fire inspector answer is always, mm -hmm. it depends. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> uh, but you want at least one in each bedroom okay. at, at, at a minimum there. Um, you know, the hallway leading to the bedrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, if you, uh, you know, if you have um, a basement or, or mm -hmm. different floor levels, make sure you've got on different levels as well. Okay. Um, as far as carbon monoxide detectors, uh, you don't have to have as many, mm -hmm. uh, but, but you do want to have them if you have uh, like anything that has natural gas, you know, your okay. furnace, hot, mm -hmm. your water heater, um, yeah, if you have an attached garage. Oh, okay. um, and even if you have a wood stove or a, mm -hmm. uh, a fireplace, because even uh, even those can, you know, burn improperly if, if there's not a good airflow. Sure. So you could get carbon monoxide from that mm -hmm. as well. So, so make sure you have them for that. Uh, you know, check your batteries. Mm -hmm. You know, some, some of the devices now have a 10 year lithium batteries right. and some of them, you know, you still might have to change the batteries. Mm -hmm. So just, just kind of check and see what you need to do. And uh, most of them, uh, like carbon monoxide detectors will actually have an end of life alarm. So they'll actually oh, really? chirp 
at seven or ten years, depending mm -hmm. on what the manufacturer says. But they'll actually they're supposed to chirp and let mm -hmm. you know it's time to change them. I so, have no idea. So even if you put new batteries in them, they're still going to mm -hmm. chirp because okay. they want you to replace it. Oh. Um, smoke alarms, uh, some of them, uh, some of the newer ones do have an end of life alarm as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but some of them, you know, uh, just just look. We tell people ten years for a smoke alarm, mm -hmm. regardless if it's a battery or electric. 10 years, get you a new smoke alarm. There you go. Uh, so, you know, that way you know it's, it's good and up to date. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so things like that, um, just uh, check around your house. Uh, you know, uh, I, I actually was doing an inspection the other day where somebody, uh, it was in a, a break room kitchen and their refrigerator had actually uh, been pushed back too far against the wall and actually had pushed the outlet into the wall a little. So, oh. so you wanna make sure that everything is secure. Mm -hmm. So little things like that. So if you have pieces of furniture, like a, a large piece, like uh, you know, a refrigerator or something, cause a lot of times they have wheels on them, mm -hmm. uh, put you a, a board behind them so they can't be pushed up against Good the wall. Idea. And, and, mm -hmm. and uh, same way if you have a couch or a chair, mm -hmm. maybe put something behind the legs there so they can't be pushed up against the wall and, and damage those cords. Um, some things to think about, you know, going to the outside of the house, uh, make sure you're checking for, uh, especially if you live in an area where there's trees close to the house, mm -hmm. uh, check for holes uh, where squirrels and, oh, yes. and birds and things like that can, can get in and, and make nests and, and they can cause a lot of havoc. Mm -hmm. uh, and same way with, uh, you know, like we talked about, uh, wasps and mud daubers, they, they tend to, to find those nice little spots and they can, they can cause problems. Uh, mm -hmm. The, you know, some of the animals can damage wiring and, and stuff and you won't see it. Uh, they could also, uh, you know, I've seen them where they'll, if there's a light fixture that has a nice opening, like a porch light, mm -hmm. uh, I've seen them build nests, you oh, know, yes. inside the, you know, so, so they've, they've got that, you know, all those nice little branches and twigs and pieces <laughs> of cloth that they get in there and they make their nest. So, you know, if, if you've got those in there and you're turning your porch light on, you know, over time that could heat up and cause a problem there. Sure. So just little things like mm -hmm. that, that, you know, you know, we might kind of overlook during the winter and stuff, but, mm -hmm. but as, you know, as they're getting out and building their, their nest and their new home for the year, right. um, uh, as far as cleaning up around the house, make sure like uh, debris, like, mm -hmm. you know, the limbs and leaves that you, you didn't get picked up during the, 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 um, during the, um, during the winter time, fall time, uh, make sure to try to get those away from the house. Mm -hmm. Especially if you, there again, if you live in an area where you've got some woods where uh, the potential of, you know, a fire or anything could, could mm -hmm. be, get it close to your house. Um, uh, just, you know, April, you know, we know April and, and that time of year is a big time for yard cleanup. Uh, make sure, you know, check with your city ordinance or city, your city public works, mm -hmm. because a lot of the cities have different pickups, you right. know, and, and they do it. And some of them will do it throughout the time, mm -hmm. throughout the year. Uh, you know, check with the, the landfill. They have free dump days. Mm -hmm. um, check with, uh, you know, uh, they have the e scrap going on sometimes, a couple of times throughout the year. Yes. So those are things to think about. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing, uh, and I forgot to talk about during, uh, during cleaning up in your house is, um, watch how much stuff you put in your, your in your attic. Uh, you know, uh, your, your attic really, you don't want to put a lot of stuff in your attic, you know, uh, and I know that sometimes it's tempting because it's kind of out of the way. Yes. And we're going to keep that for, you know, for just in case, you know, uh, everybody knows Justin, you know, just in case he's Jeff, always, right. yeah, so he's, he's always around he and he's, uh, that's right. He always <laughs> likes to keep things and, uh, and we tend to do that. And what it, what it causes for us is, uh, it makes number one. It makes extra fuel load. Uh, mm -hmm. So we, when we're looking at, you know, if we if we go into a building that's on fire, um, everything in that building has a potential to to ignite, sure. and so that makes it harder for us. Uh, the other thing is that should you know there be uh, a fire in the attic, uh, that could cause you know those timbers to weaken and actually cause you know more stuff to fall on us. You yeah. know, uh, the same way, just like uh, you know. Uh, you know, if, if we're in there and we're trying to get around stuff and there's a lot of stuff, uh, it makes it harder for us to maneuver. Mm -hmm. uh, it also makes it harder for us on, on medical runs. You know, if, we're, if we need to get somebody out of a house quickly, um, if there's a lot of uh, just, you know, stuff piled up in the hallways mm -hmm. and, and, and rooms, then it's harder for us to maneuver and get to people and work yeah. on them and, and get them out of the, the home quickly and safely. So declutter. Um, Decluttering is, is a big thing. Um, uh, I, I know it, it, and it happens over time. You don't really realize right. it, uh, but there's a lot of opportunities. You know, there's, there's the hospice shop, there's mm -hmm. Goodwill, right. uh, Helping Hand of Hope. A lot of places it'll take that stuff if mm -hmm. it's in good shape. And, you know, so look at those as opportunities when you're spring cleaning. Uh, you know, like I said, it helps us, it helps you. Uh, so that's, that's uh, a good, good way mm -hmm. there. 
And talk uh, a little bit about a lot of people because they are cleaning and mm -hmm. like you mentioned, the brush and limbs and that sort of thing. And they put them near the front, you know, their yard at the road um, in order for the city to come by and pick them up. But how careful should we be, you know, about making those piles maybe too big or blocking a driveway or in case for an emergent, right, emergency Right, absolutely, response. yeah. So, so make sure that, you know, you're keeping the, uh, the entrance to your, your home or, or your business, mm -hmm. you know, clear so that we can get in there. Uh, our trucks, as you can see, are, are not small. Right. So um, <laughs> trying to maneuver those in a tight space, uh, you know, there again, it, uh, it, it can limit uh, our response and, and also make it more hazardous for us. You know, uh, you know, so that that is something to consider. Okay. Uh, you know, the other thing is to make sure that when you're putting them close to the road, uh, don't make blind spots mm -hmm. for, you know, for yourself or others pulling in and out of entrances mm -hmm. to driveways and stuff. So that is something to consider a, a good point there. Uh, but but yes, definitely try to try to keep it where um, everybody's got good vision and you okay. d you're not restricting us uh, for that emergency operation as well. Okay. Uh, so very good there. Um, there, there are times where, um, you know, talking about limbs and brush and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the cities, uh, you're usually limited on what you can do because we do have the limb and, and leaf pickup. And, yes. and, and that is something that, that it, uh, we have there, excellent uh, resource. But, um, you know, check with your local ordinances, you know, what is allowed. If you live in the rural areas, the county, uh, the unincorporated areas, mm -hmm. uh, you're a little more, uh, you know, you got a little more leeway what you mm -hmm. can do. It is always good, number one, to uh, make sure that uh, whatever you're, you're going to burn, that it is away from your brush pile, is away from the woods, tree lines, things like that, away from, away from structures, at least, mm -hmm. you know, about 75 feet away from uh, make sure you're constantly attending it. That's probably the number one thing where we have incidents. Mm -hmm. uh, it's either uh, people will not be attending the fire and, it, and, and then when they come back and check on it, it's spread, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, the other thing is to watch the wind conditions, watch mm -hmm. the weather conditions. Uh, if it's a gusty, windy day, that's not a good day to burn. Right. So, um, so, so uh, think about <laughs> that, that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, even if you're there with it, that wind can carry the embers. So think about that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's always a good idea to call it in. You know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Hardin County 911 has a couple of non-emergency lines that you can call in and say, hey, I live at this address. Oh, I want to do a control idea. burn. And, and that way mm -hmm. uh, it helps. It, it gives us a heads up, you know. Um, but like I said, now in the cities, we have burn ordinances. Mm -hmm. So we do issue burn permits for certain things, but you always want to check. Um, and regardless of whether you're in a city or unincorporated area, the state has laws as well that, mm -hmm. you know, you can only burn basically brush or trees. You know, mm -hmm. you can't. Uh, you can't burn tires, building material. You can't tear down that old shed, right. put it in a pile, and light it off. Uh, and uh, people doesn't... think they can do it, and they do it right. all the time. Or they, people they... burn trash. Yes. Please so, tell me that's not right. legal. So that is not legal, <laughs> okay. um, and that is actually state law, EPA. Mm -hmm. That's actually written in there. So uh, only basically, you know, if you're clearing off or you need to do mm -hmm. yard debris, that's about it. Uh, you know, any of that other stuff, garbage, uh, you know, tires, building materials, those, those are off limits. Uh, okay. You're not supposed to burn those because you have paint. Yes, you know, all yeah, those treat, yeah, treated stuff. You know, so you, you don't want to do that. Okay. Um, so definitely not burn that, uh, burn garbage or anything like that. Uh, so, like I said, that is actually a state law as well. Okay. Um, in the cities, you know, usually you can you can have burn pits, recreational mm -hmm. fires. Yes. Uh, the thing with those is we just you know remind you you know make sure you're you, there again you monitor it you burn clean lumber and then make sure that you uh, keep uh, uh, you know about 20 feet from the house for your burn mm -hmm. pit. Uh, grills, you're grilling out, make sure they're about 10, 15 feet away from the house or any overhangs where you, you know, yes, so. Yes, because we so. all kind of do that, hang on, sit right there by the back door because you right, want to be yeah. close to the kitchen. Yeah, and, yep, yep, yeah, you Or you're right by your fence. Or, or it's, you know, it's a day, you know, there's kind of cloudy, might right. rain. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to grill out, but, I'm, you know, I can be close. And, and so, yes, you yeah. can, uh, you know, people don't think about the radiant heat mm -hmm. or, or if the fire, um, you know, uh, somebody might not be uh, as, uh, good about cleaning their grill regularly mm -hmm. so that grease buildup can ignite if yes. it gets hot enough uh, just like it can in a in a commercial kitchen you know mm -hmm. the grease builds up uh, so so you have to look at that as a, as a potential uh, so so think about that that you know if you're if you're grilling keep it away from the home uh, you know, with it warming up, you know, people are getting out more and grilling. And okay. now I do have neighbors that grill in, in the winter too. So well, true. But there <laughs> are some diehard. Yeah. Yep, yep. So. Um, and should you keep a fire extinguisher or water, a bucket of water, or something nearby near the the grilling area? Extinguisher is a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, definitely. Um, uh, but you know, one of the best things to do is if you do notice that it's 
uh, is is to you know try to turn off the gas if, if it's a gas grill okay. uh, but you know keep the lid on it you mm -hmm. know don't don't open up the lid to see what's going on right you know if, if you know keep the lid closed and and a lot of times it will actually extinguish itself because it'll use up its oxygen oh, okay. you know or use it up enough mm -hmm. that it's it's not as you know a big fire uh, but that is one reason you do want to make sure that you keep it away from the home. So if it does have flames yes. or the radiant heat, it doesn't mm -hmm. uh, get, get into your home, uh, you know, or melt your siding and stuff like right. that. So, <laughs> so those are things to think about, definitely. Okay. okay, and like you said, a lot of folks, we love our fire pits, Yes. Um, whether they're the, you know, the kind you buy at the store, or folks build them and put them in the ground right. or, or whatever. So um, what type of material should be underneath those? Because some people I see them, they just put them in the middle of the yard you know, right. in, in grass or, or whatever, so. Well, you definitely want to use like, uh, you know, rock or gravel, something that's going to, you know, be non-combustible mm -hmm. and, and keep the, try to keep that area, you know, most people are going to keep that area kind of trim around it anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, but usually having, you know, uh, a barrier of, of rock or, or, uh, or landscaping type material mm -hmm. around it, um, and, or if you have a metal one, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah, trying to keep something that's that's not combustible that's not going to yeah. catch fire and stuff and, and some of them i mean because dirt dirt is not going to burn obviously so mm -hmm. so that's good as well um but but yeah just make sure and then make sure there again even though it's in a contained area mm -hmm. uh you know still just keep an eye on it don't don't say well we're done for the night and go in and still have an active fire because right. the embers could mm -hmm. you know uh, if it, the wind picks up you know the embers could go uh so so you don't want to have that happen as well yes because so. you see that a lot and people have bonfires and Everybody goes home and <laughs> the yeah, some, still, yeah. some still burn a little bit. Yep, so right, somebody's right, got to be in definitely. charge of putting yep, that out. Yep. Okay. Well, that's great. And so, like you said, give a phone call and just right. give a, a little warning saying, yeah. hey, I'm going to do a burn or, right. or whatever. And yeah, does the, and, the fire department, do you all participate in a lot of controlled burns across the community? Uh, not as much as we used to. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it, it, we kind of, we kind of let them handle it. You know, okay. uh, if it's a contractor, he's got all his equipment there mm -hmm. and they, you know, they're giving instructions of what they can and can't do. But, uh, now like for recreational fires, you don't have to call us all the time. So okay. I, I don't want people to think, oh, well, I'm going to use my fire pit tonight and I've got to call the right. fire department, <laughs> you know, or, or the call 911, the dispatch. Uh, but, but, uh, if it is like a, a brush pile or whatever, mm -hmm. but like I said, there again, make sure you know what your ordinances are because, you don't want to just go light something off in the city and then mm -hmm. we show up and say, hey, you can't do that. So, right. So. And of course, you do also have to watch different seasons of the year because Absolutely, there, there yes. will be an ordinance saying it's summertime and it's really dry. We haven't had rain for right. a month, so yeah. please don't burn. Yeah. And, and we try to make sure to put that information out as, as well as other mm -hmm. uh, authorities will try to make sure that information is out there when is a good time and when is not. So yes. definitely. Good deal. All right, so that takes care of our house. There's so much going on there. Um, we want to talk a little bit about rechargeable batteries and the yes. safety with that. Talk about well, that for us. Yes, because um, so many of our uh, our tools and things now mm -hmm. are using rechargeable, yes. and so and it's a big thing, and and that's and it's good. Um, and, but there are some things to remember, uh, especially with a lot of the the ones that uh, require a lot of power. They're using lithium batteries, you mm -hmm. know, of different types. So uh, lithium is a is a good uh, material and, and a good energy source, uh, but there's some things to remember, you know, try to make sure, uh, check the battery before you use it, you know, make sure it's not damaged, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, especially if it's an outdoor tool uh, or, or an outdoor piece of equipment, mm -hmm. you know, we have, uh, you know, battery powered mowers now, I've even yes. seen battery powered uh, rotor tillers, uh, oh, wow. you know, all, so all that kind of stuff, hedge mm -hmm. trimmers, everything, yeah, blowers, yeah all that uh, stuff. weed eaters, everything mm -hmm. is, so make sure, uh, and, 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 uh, and I do love third party places like Amazon and all mm -hmm. that, but uh, they don't monitor what type of batteries they sell. All so, right. um, so typically they're just going to, you know, it, so, so make sure that, uh, you know, that the battery is uh, designed and built and uh, actually, you know, is, is uh, one of the, the like underwriters laboratory or FM oh, okay. or one of those have approved mm -hmm. it. Uh, so you want to make sure that it's been tested by one of those companies. Oh, okay. uh, so you don't want to use, you know, just something that, that, that came from overseas that, mm -hmm. that didn't really have any testing standards. Uh, the good ones will have like, uh, they'll have where they've got a temperature control, they'll have a, you know, a overload where they don't, uh, or overcharge protection, so they oh, don't, okay. you know, so, but if you do notice that the battery looks like the shape's changed, it's mm -hmm. maybe swelled, or maybe it's it's a lot hotter than it, you know, there will be a little bit of heat as it charges, okay. and, you know, or when you're using it, mm -hmm. but if it's, if it like real excessive, then you want to keep an eye on that, or it starts to smell funny, mm -hmm. just, just things that you want to, you know, keep an eye out for, okay. that's not the normal usage, uh, but like I said, um, you know, if you're using, say, uh, you know, a name brand, uh, I always recommend, even though it's a little more expensive, mm -hmm. buy their batteries because their sense. batteries are tested and, and, you know, used for their, because their they're, product. again, you, yeah, you can't get a third party battery 
sometimes it might not, number one, last as long, mm -hmm. uh, or number two, you might not have all the safety features that your actual uh, mm -hmm. brand battery has. So that's something to think about. Okay, um, that makes perfect sense. So, so those are things to think about there. Um, and then just, uh, you know, when you're charging them, uh, make sure you're using the correct charger. Mm -hmm. uh, so that goes for any of your rechargeable stuff. Make sure you're using the correct charger. Uh, you know, try to plug it directly in the wall, uh, not to use extension cords and things right. like that. So um, if you do use a, a power strip, make sure it is one that can handle that uh, that uh, load, that amperage, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so uh, so just things like that to remember, uh, you know, when you're charging and everything. Uh, and, and just uh, kind of keep them away from things. Don't put them in an area where there's a lot of, uh, say, paper, you know, papers, mm -hmm. or, you know, don't put them in an area where they could get covered up with something like, uh, a tarp or just uh, you want to keep them where they can breathe and okay. they can cool off because mm -hmm. like I said they are going to build up a little heat while mm -hmm. they're so if you've got it where they can't dissipate that heat you could have the potential of a fire there. Okay well. so it should be in a, a nice cool setting. Right cool say, setting right? in okay. an open area where they can mm -hmm. kind of and then just try to you know and, and make sure they're uh, you know you've got them in the charger correctly or, mm -hmm. or you know get a good seat in the charger as well or plugged in well. Okay and is it safe to just leave them in the, in the charger forever until you go back to use it or once it's charged take it off. It, it's better to take it off once okay. it's fully charged. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them will, you know, uh, do have that protection built in now that they'll shut off mm -hmm. and won't keep charging. Uh, okay. But it is better to have that uh, where once they're, uh, once they've reached that charge mm -hmm. uh, to go ahead and, and, um, and unplug them or, or remove them from the charger okay. so that they're not getting that constant energy. Gotcha. Yeah, because yeah, it'll just go on and on and right, right. keep it in so. there for 24, 48 hours. <laughs> I've, I'm guilty of maybe leaving that in there for too long. So, Okay, so and, and again, those are items that that's becoming much more popular. Yes, so that's that probably definitely. something that folks hadn't thought about. Right. Yeah. So definitely make sure that uh, you're you're using them properly and following the manufacturer directions on those. Awesome. Thank you for bringing that up because yes, that was really something we needed to discuss. So um, and lastly, we've got a few more minutes. So we want to talk about because we have have some warm days already. Yes. Um, it's early spring, but it feels like June. So let's talk a little bit about children and pets and hot cars. Yes. So um, and I didn't want to go into too much detail because that is we could we could talk a lot about mm -hmm. uh, children and cars, car seats and all that kind of stuff. But um, the, the car temperature is something very important to think about. Um, you know, just an example, uh, like today, it's a pretty mild day, only in the uh -huh. 60s. But on a sunny 60 degree day, um, it can actually be 110 degrees in the car. Oh my gosh. So, so yeah, so I mean, today it's cloudy, you know, mm -hmm. where we're doing the interview and everything, but um, but on a, a, you know, a nice sunny 60 degree day, yeah. uh, that sun is, is in there beating on, that, you know, on the car there. So it can be about 110 degrees. Uh, and you know, with in Kentucky, with the humidity, it sometimes yeah. feels a lot hotter. <laughs> it feels like too Right, right. So, um, so that's something to think about. Uh, the other thing to think about is, you know, a car's temperature can rise 19 to 20 degrees in about 10 minutes. Wow. So if it's just sitting there and the sun's beating down on it, in about yeah. 10 minutes it can raise about 20 degrees. That so, is so fast. And that's the is. time that you always say, oh, I'm just going to run in the store right. real yeah. quick and yep. come right back. And yep. then you get caught up in there or the right. line is long or whatever. Right. And in that short amount of time, um, the temperature's risen that much. That's Absolutely. really scary. So, so yeah, so think about that, that, that quick stop. Hey, I'm just going to run into the five star mm -hmm. and, and you know, grab something to drink, you know, so uh, that that's time, you know, that it's just sitting there heating up. Yeah. Uh, so not in the shade or anything. Um, some th things to think about is uh, some preventative measures as a parent or a grandparent. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you when you've got the car sitting in the driveway, the kids are running around playing, go ahead and lock the car. There you go. You know, so so lock the car so they can't get in mm -hmm. and accidentally lock themselves in, things like that. Um, you know, try to keep the keys away from the kids. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, it's it's always they like the keys because they jingle right. and make, you know, so <laughs> and so um, so so remember that, uh, try to keep the kids the the keys away from the kids. Um, you know, when you're when you're moving the car, uh, something to mm -hmm. think about if if they're you know, say you're leaving you know, uh, and, and the kids are out in the, the yard stuff, make sure you can see where they all are. Yes. Uh, because, you know, a lot of times they're, they're shorter, so they're mm -hmm. going to be below the window. And, and so, so those are things to think about. If you, uh, if you're not, maybe you're not the normal parent that takes the child to daycare, mm -hmm. uh, set a reminder on your phone. Yes. Or um, another thing to think about is have a stuffed animal. Mm -hmm. Put the stuffed animal in the, in the car seat when the child's not in there. I take the stuffed animal and put it in the front seat with you when the there child's not there and, or when the child is in the seat. Mm -hmm. So you look over, you know, and you see, oh, hey, that stuffed animal is not normally there. And so you've got that visual reminder or um, set your lunchbox or your briefcase yeah. back there. So you have to physically open that door and look, oh, 
hey, I forgot to drop forgot. little Johnny off at the daycare. <laughs> Oops. Yes, you know, she so, have a reason. Right, yeah. So, so those are things to think about. And there are some new technologies trying to come out mm -hmm. to try to make that better to help parents. But, but those are some things. Or, you know, have your, have your spouse text you, hey, did you drop, you know, uh, you drop little Johnny off at daycare this yes. morning, you know, so mm -hmm. yes, those, those are things to think about. Um, if you do see a child unattended, take action. Yes. Um, number one, you know, check the vehicle, communicate with the child. Uh, sometimes there have been cases where maybe an older child is, maybe they're leaning back in a seat mm -hmm. and you just straight line of sight, you can't see him. But yeah. if you walk up to the car, you look, oh, this child's right. here, but there's another child here mm -hmm. with, you know, big brother, big sister sitting in the front seat listen to their iPod or whatever, right. but they don't do iPods anymore. <laughs> yeah, they got yeah. their, their beats yeah. on. Yeah, so whatever. yeah, so, um, uh, but, but yeah, do, uh, you know, just make sure there's somebody there. You know, there, like I said, somebody may be, you know, uh, in, a, in another seat, you just can't see them from your angle. Mm -hmm. So walk up, try to communicate with the child, uh, call 911 if it does look like it's an emergency, they are unattended. Um, and, and if the child looks like they're physically in distress, they're not communicating with you, they look like that they are, um, and there's nobody there, uh, get the child out, you know. Okay. So uh, in that case, the, you know, if you've looked, there's nobody else around, the, the car is, is turned off, it's hot, the child is not oh responsive, gosh, yeah. go ahead and, and you know, do what you can to get the child out of the car. Exactly. In that case, you're, you know, you're, you're doing a good Samaritan deed, mm -hmm. you know, so that, that's okay. Yeah, right, absolutely. Completely. And I will say that also goes for pets and for the elderly. I often see folks that leave an elderly loved one in the car again while they run in and you'll see that person just, you know, sweating and, and not feeling well and you just think, what are they doing? So that goes for anyone you see trapped in a hot car take notice and, and take right. take care. Right, yeah, and call kind of call 911, but uh, definitely, you know, like I said, make sure you, you kind of walk up to, you know, before you, you yeah. know, start Yeah, don't just bust a window in. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> At least so check and ask that if they're okay. Be, yeah, so, so, <laughs> before uh, you yeah, save the definitely, day. Definitely, <laughs> yep, yeah, so, because, the, you know, the number has gone down of, of fatalities from that, uh, but it's, it's still, you know, last year it was 29, in 2019 it was 53, so it has gone down, okay. but still that's a lot to, you know that's that's 29 that we could have yeah, hopefully saved. saved yeah so okay. so just just like i said if you're if it's if it's out of your norm you know maybe make some reminders and yeah, do, something do something to something. remind yourself yep. okay well always great stuff from tommy crane our time always goes by so quickly but yes, um, lots of great stuff for spring so as you are doing your spring cleaning and taking care of your home keep all these great tips in mind tommy we appreciate your time we appreciate you. all that the fire department does and we are excited and thank you for welcoming us into your space so thank you on behalf of hcec tv i'm kendra scott hope you have a great day a wonderful spring stay safe stay cool and we'll see you next time